the credit game has changed. Yes, the credit game has changed. And I can prove it to you with two questions. 99% of you will get the answer to the first question right. But 99% of you will get the answer to the second question wrong. Let's begin. Question number one. What is your net worth? That's right. What is your net worth? You got that answer right. Your net worth is all of your assets minus your liability and expenses. What's left over is your net worth. Good. Question number two. What is your debt worth? Let me say that again. What is your debt worth? Were you saying, hold on, is that such a word? Yes, because if your net worth is everything from your assets, subtracting liabilities and expenses, equals net worth, so that number on the other side of net worth, the expenses and the liabilities, is your debt worth. Now, let me tell you why that's important. Because your credit reports let everyone know what is your debt worth. Your FICO score is only to a banker a snapshot of what your debt worth is. Let me prove that to you. Your FICO score goes from 300 to 850, so that's 550 points. 35% of it is payment history, and 30% of it is amount of debt owed. So 65% of your FICO score is related to your debt worth, how you pay the amount of debt you're worth. I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but that's what it is. 65% of the score is how you pay the debt that you owe. But your wealth score, which is related to your data reports that are provided by data bureaus, and it is based on your net worth because it tallies up how much wealth you have. It's called a wealth score. The five metrics of your FICO score, the biggest two tally up how much debt you have and how well you repay it. But the three metrics of your wealth score tally up your assets. If you own land, aircraft, watercraft, why, is the, why are those three important to a wealth score? Because the wealthiest people have land, aircraft and watercraft right you don't see poor people with land aircraft and watercraft it just doesn't work out that way so now that you understand your net worth is related to your wealth score and your debt worth is related to your FICO score now you'll understand more why your data reports trump your credit reports and if you don't believe that, the Federal Trade Commission proved it in 2019 in December of that year. They did a bulletin and a workshop saying that they had tracked down some private organizations that were causing declinations for credit in the areas of housing, employment, and general credit. And these companies were not Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion. These companies were tracking the five C's of credit, which is associated mostly to your net worth. For instance, the C for capacity, which lets them know that you do have income coming in because capacity is related to employment. The C for collateral lets them know what assets you own. And the third C for capital lets bankers and lenders and credit issuers know how much liquidity or reserves you have. So three out of the five C's of credit that dictate if you're credit worthy or not for a loan, a business loan, a credit card, a line of credit or whatever, 
from a bank or lender or credit issuer, three of those C's are related to net worth. So when I say to you that your credit reports are trumped by your data reports, and I say you know your credit score, but do you know your wealth score? I'm trying to clue you in that you're looking in the wrong direction if you're thinking just because you have an 800 credit score that you're going to get approved for whatever you want, you're mistaken. I'll give you an example of it. You can't open a bank account with a derogatory check systems file and check systems was not a major credit bureau. You can have an 800 credit score with Equifax, Experian and TransUnion and a $100,000 check that you want to deposit into the bank and they'll tell you you can't open an account because you have a derogatory check systems file. Check systems is the gatekeeper for the big banks. If you don't believe that, let me give you another one. How do you think you're going to borrow a lot of money? Let's say 100000 or more is when you tap into bankers and lenders, personal guarantor underwriting protocol, anything typically beneath 50,000 or 25,000, they'll let you have without a PG, right? But anything above that, they want to see a banking activity report, right? And you know the banking activity reports show every deposit and every debit for every bank account you have in the country, checking and saving for up to 20 years of records. So you're telling me with an 800 credit score, you're going to walk into a bank, get a $100,000 line of credit. They're going to check your credit report, see the 800 score, They're going to, which is your debt worth. They're going to check your wealth score, which goes from zero to six. If you own land, you get two points. If you own aircraft, you get two points. And if you own watercraft, you get two points. So you can have a wealth score of a six. If you own none of that, you have a wealth score of a zero. So the wealth score is on a banking activity report. That report's also going to show all your reserves, all your debits, all your deposits for up to 20 years. And the average reserve that you've had over 20 years never went over $15,000. You've never had more than $15,000 in your bank account at one time over 20 years. And you're telling me when a banker sees that report, he's going to give you a $100,000 loan uncollateralized, non-collateralized, right? I'm talking about a line of credit for a business. I'm talking about a uh, loan for a business, a uh, consolidation loan, something like that. I'm not talking about a auto loan because it's collateralized by the car. I'm not talking about a mortgage because it's collateralized by the house. I'm talking about cash or even a prestigious credit card, right? So this banker sees that you've never had more than $15,000 in the bank at one time in your life. In 20 years, that's a life, right? And they're going to approve you with the 800 score. But right now, currently, they see what's in your bank account. And you're only two or three weeks away from being bankrupt based on your debt worth numbers on your credit report. And you're asking for 100000 with this 800 score. I submit to you, the reason your credit is capped and the reason you're getting declined with great credit scores and the reason that you can't get over five or ten thousand dollar limits is because you're misdirected you're looking over here at your debt worth score when the bankers are looking over here at your net worth score your wealth score and they're looking at your banking activity reports and some of these other reports that are out there but the three most important ones to the five c's of credit are all associated to net worth so if you want to learn more about this, I'm opening up some free time where I'm going to spend about 10 or 15 minutes on the phone with you and give you some of the real tips, tactics, and strategies that you need to uncap yourself from being, I mean, you know, treated by the bank with 800, 750, 700 credit scores like you're just one of the mill, just someone else. You're just like the others, right? Well, that doesn't happen to me because I know what reports to focus on. It's not Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Although your debt worth needs to be demonstrated that you can pay bills. But the net worth reports, if you don't have any net worth, 
you need to freeze those reports. And I'm gonna teach you about the ones you need to freeze and I'm gonna give you my book, The Wealth Score Expert that I wrote in 2017 about the data reports. I'm gonna give you that for free because I wanna help you out, all right? And this consultation is gonna be free. So somewhere around this video, schedule to get on a free strategy call with me, 10 or 15 minutes. I'm gonna give you my Wealth Score Expert book and I'm gonna share with you some of the shadow secrets that very few credit experts will share. And I'm gonna give you those for free. Trust me, schedule the call.